so friends uh, in this video we will discuss about uh, symmetry element like uh, axis of symmetry uh, for especially when it is uh, like infinite axis of symmetry and how coordinates are changed uh, during rotation and others so let's start so symmetry axis uh, may be infinite uh, for example in scl and any diatomic linear molecule rotation through this axis which with uh, any angle gives equivalent structure so for example if we take uh, hcl it is a linear molecule and it is diatomic molecule suppose we are passing an axis through h and cl then if we rotate this molecule for infinite time then infinite times we will have equivalent structure okay so that's why this kind of symmetry axis is known as infinity uh, its value is infinity means means uh, if we want to write it then we will write like this c infinity so in diatomic linear molecule such kind of axis is present now how coordinates are changed during rotation when we perform rotation operation then coordinates are changed let's discuss about that uh, let's suppose there are three coordinates x y and z so this is the z coordinates this is y coordinates and this is x coordinates and each have 90 degree angle between each other then z axis consider a molecular axis y axis is on the plane and x axis in front of us uh, sorry y axis is in front of us and x axis is considered in the plane so if there is a rotation with 90 degrees for example this is the coordinates and if you rotate this coordinates with 90 degree angle then y will be shifted towards z and z will be shifted towards x or x will be shifted towards y so with this way the coordinates are changed similarly if we see this molecule or oh sorry this uh, kind of axis then z will be rotated towards x and x will be rotated towards z and y will be rotated with will be rotated towards Uh, x and x will be rotated towards y so with this way the uh, uh, coordinates are changed when we perform rotation operation okay so how coordinates are changed we have learned already that uh, when rotation is given 180 degree or 90 degree angle then how coordinates are changed with these figures we can understand now one thing we have to remember that if rotation against x axis with 180 degree then up down changes are occurred so for example x is here and y is here and if we rotate this molecule with a 180 degree angle or against x axis then it becomes y up and down changes will be occurred any rotation with y axis suppose this is the thing and y axis rotate we are rotating this molecule to y axis then diagonal changes will be occur for example here x and here is y here is y and here is x then it will be look like this y y x and x so diagonally we will have change okay when when we will have this kind of change when we have we are rotating the molecule through y axis and with 180 degree angle and if we are rotating the z through z of z axis then left and right changes will be occur for example this is the x and this is the y and if we are rotating this molecule with 180 degree angle 180 degree angle through uh, x axis then so is z axis z axis is like this so if we rotate this molecule to z axis then left and right changes means x will be shifted at the place of y and vice versa so it will be look like it will look like this so this thing we have to remember that when we rotate the molecule through x y or z axis then what kind of changes are uh, occurred so this is a now we will discuss that um, how can we find a uh, axis of symmetry principal axis of symmetry with the coordinates okay so axis on which rotation gives equivalent orientation that is known as axis symmetry axis 
then with the following presentation it would be easy to understand for example this is the molecule this is h2o molecule this is x axis this is z axis and this is y axis we are rotating this molecule with 180 degree angle on x axis okay so we know that if you rotate the molecule with 180 degree through x axis then up and down changes are occur up and down so this h will be shifted this side this h will be shifted this side and it will look like this and now if we compare this to structure these are not equivalent so that's why we can say that it doesn't have c2 x axis okay now come to the uh, y rotation through y axis so if we rotate this molecule through this y axis then if we know that uh, if we rotate the molecule with 180 degree through y axis then uh, diagonal changes are occur so diagonal changes means this h will be shifted this side and this set uh, this uh, edge will be shifted diagonal changes so this will be shifted here so it will look like this and uh, if we compare this to structure these are not equivalent that's why we will say it doesn't have c2 y axis now if we rotate this molecule through z axis then we know that uh, if you are rotating the molecule through z axis then right and left left and right changes are occurred okay so this hydrogen will be shifted this side and this hydrogen will be shifted this side so it will look like this and if we compare or if we see these two structures then we can see that these are equivalent to each other so that's why we will say it has c2 z axis so with this way we can find out the c axis of symmetry with proper coordinates Similarly, with the example of H2O2, we can uh, also understand that how can we find out the axis of symmetry with proper coordinates. So this is the H2O2 molecule. Here there is a H, there is O, there is O, there is H. If we rotate this molecule through X axis with 180 degree angle, then we know that in X axis, if we rotate the molecule, we have to have right and left changes. Okay, so this H will be shifted this side and this H will be shifted here only. So it will look like this. And if we compare these two molecules, these are not equivalent because here H is a upper side, but here h is in lower side okay so these are not equivalent so that's why we will say it is it doesn't have it to x axis now if we rotate this molecule through y axis then we can see that it this uh, structure will look like this because in y axis we have to we we we, we have changes in or uh, diagonally changes okay so this h will be this side and this edge will be this side so it will look like the same structure yeah, equivalent structure that's so why you will say it has c2 y axis but if you rotate this molecule to z axis then we have to up and down changes we, we have to up and down changes so this hydrogen will be shifted here and this hydrogen will be shifted here and it will look like this and if you compare these two structures there is no equivalence in these two structures so that's why we will say it doesn't have c2 z axis also so this is the very good example for the understanding of uh, axis of symmetry with proper coordinates Similarly, if we see ethane molecule, then it has a C3x axis equivalent to, uh, means C3, if we pass C3x axis, it will give us equivalent orientation. Okay, so that's why in this case, C3x is principal axis. Now we have to note some things uh, that if principal axis is Cn, then either C2 will be present or n number of C2 will be present. For example, if C3 is the principal axis, then there may be zero number of C2 or three number of C2. C2 means subsidiary axis. 
if C3 and C2 both are present, then C3 will be principal axis and C2 will be subsidiary axis. So how many subsidiary axis can be present in the molecule that for that we can use this trick. So what is the trick? Trick is if C n axis is principal axis, then n number of C2 may be present or zero number of C2 present. So suppose for example, H2O, there is C2 in principal axis and zero C2 are present. So in H2O, if we see H2O molecule, this is the H2O molecule, then it has C2 axis. So C n means it has, and what is the value of n? n is C2. So it has only one C2, it will see the principal axis and it has any other C2. It doesn't have any other C2. Any other C2 means it doesn't have any subsidiary axis. Another example is BF3, it has C3 principal axis. That's why it has three number of C2 present. This is a B, this is F, this is F, this is F. So C3 axis is passed through boron atom only. And one C2 is passed through this one, second this one, and third this one. So we don't need to go to find out uh, all other C2s. Just we need to use trick. If we are able to see any C2 present in the molecule, then just uh, we need to go for trick only. Go to trick only. So C3 is the principal axis, and it has C2 because we have identified. So that's why we will say it has three number of C2 present. But similarly, in PTCL4, there is a C4 principal axis and four number of C2 are present. In benzene, there is a C6 principal axis and six number of C2 are present. So in this way, we can find out how many C2 means uh, subsidiary axis are present in the molecule.